pasta. Pa Where did they go? No! Oh, that's fine. I guess there's always edamame chips. Okay. <gasps> Where did they go? No! Oh, you're kidding. They never sell out. Oh, at least they'll have normal chips. For sure the vinegar ones are still there. Okay, okay. Oh, no. <gasps> Wait, what? <gasps> Sadists. Okay, this is just stupid now. I'm having frozen. No way will they be out of garlic wedges. Okay, here we go, here we go. Uh -huh. No, no, no! I, I guess I'll just starve then. Let's talk about scarcity. For a while now, I've been really interested in seeing why we are the way we are. And there's one particular limiting mindset that stands out. And it's something that we don't realize just how harmful it can be. And that's the limiting mindset of scarcity. From people buying out shelves of food at the supermarket, despite there being plenty to share, to me being jealous and intimidated of others who have a quality that I lack, all of this is controlled by a mindset of scarcity. It's this automatic belief that we don't have enough, whether it be money, resources, talent, or ideas. In Tony Robbins' book, Awaken the Giant Within, he says this, if you believe we live in a world with scarce resources, where there's only so much money, so much time, so much love, then you'll constantly live in fear that you won't have enough. So why do we have this limiting mindset? What are some common examples of this? And what are the effective ways to overcome this fear of scarcity? That is something we'll be discussing right now. First of all, why do we have this scarcity mindset? This mindset was really helpful back then when we needed it to survive. Back when our threat was starvation, it made sense to live with this fear of scarcity because resources were in fact scarce. But now it's a bit different. Chances are for us who have the privilege of accessing the internet and being able to watch things like this video, life is not so much about survival anymore. But while we've really developed quickly culturally, biologically we're not so quick and it's no surprise that things like this fear of scarcity is still here. But scarcity is not just about money or resources, it's about focusing on what we lack versus what we have. So this can extend to relationships, to skills that you might have or your self-confidence. So here are some examples of this scarcity mindset. Okay, I just need granola. Oh, that one's eight bucks. Oh, I want it though, but no, nah, it's too expensive. Maybe I should just get 550. Here's one I find myself doing, where I'm thinking I don't have enough money for something I prefer, even when I can definitely afford it. Oh, why did I have to miss out on that? It looks like so much fun. Why did I have to be busy? I wanted to go to the park too. Here's an example of FOMO where you feel like you've missed out. The underlying belief is that you won't have more experiences like this, therefore having a scarcity mindset around opportunity. Hey Joe, I don't understand this question. How did you even figure it out? Hmm, if I help them though, won't they get a better grade than I will? My mark won't even be that good compared to others anymore. Here's an example of hoarding knowledge to ourselves. The actual belief is that there's a limited amount of things that make us special or better. So the more I share, the more I lose. Oh, cricket is the best sport ever. I mean, you guys like it, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I love cricket. Cricket is amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like cricket as well. I can't believe I just said that. And of course, people pleasing. Trying to adjust yourself to make people like you because of the fear that not enough people will like you. So what's the common belief for all of these examples? It's that what we have is not enough and that the resources and opportunities in the world are finite. So let's take a recent example of where I showed a scarcity mindset around opportunity. And I actually wrote a blog post about this where I go more into detail about what happened, um, which I will put somewhere below. So to give a brief summary around it, I attended this personal development session that was focused on public speaking and they really made themselves seem very unique. So I was sold, I spent $3,000 on a three day event because I was certain that it had enough value for me to put a lot of money into it. But over the next couple of days, I started to doubt my decision and again, I go more into detail about why um, in my blog post, but the main thing that was keeping me there 
was the fact that I was scared that no other opportunities like this would come up. And like FOMO, I just didn't want to miss out on an event that could potentially help me. But thanks to my wonderful friends who were able to talk some sense into me and say there are plenty of opportunities out there, it's not just this one, that there was a reason why I was doubting this one and that there would be for sure a better option out there later in life. And this advice seems so obvious, but really at that time I had complete tunnel vision and I was just scared of not having another opportunity like this. And this idea extends to things like staying in a toxic relationship or staying in a job that you really, really dislike because there's a comfort of knowing that you are secure in what you have and that the opportunity scarcity mindset is saying maybe there's not an opportunity out there for you as good as this one right now. Which is, you know... <laughs> so another personal example of my fear of scarcity was when I was working at one of my past jobs. And here I was a bystander for workplace bullying and I was new at that time and the thing that was stopping me from speaking up and being a decent person was my fear of losing my job. And it, I was scared that if I spoke up and spoke up against management that I would, you know, lose and then therefore not have enough money to sustain my living expenses. To be honest, nothing terrible would have happened. I am lucky enough to be supported financially, but the fear of losing something anyway was too much and I just didn't speak up. This scarcity concept even extends to what Carol Dweck refers to as the fixed mindset. This is basically the thought that we're born with something and we can't develop it later in life, like skills such as drawing or being good at sport. But again, if you can access this video, chances are life's not about surviving. And nowadays we have more opportunities, more resources, more places to connect with people and ideas that we have despite what we think. So what are some ways that we can overcome this fear of scarcity? And I'll share some examples that have really helped me along the way. So the overall aim is to develop a mindset of abundance and the fact that we have enough and that there is enough. But that's easier said than done, so here are some ways to do that. So first we have to ask ourselves, is this scarcity mindset valid? For some of us, the fear of scarcity might actually be helping us. For example, it's probably wiser to hold off from buying a new car if you're in debt, or thinking you have heaps of time to take a nap, even though your essay's due in an hour. But for the majority of us, we have irrational thoughts about when we don't have enough, even when we clearly do. So we can ask ourselves, do I actually have enough? Do I actually have more opportunities and resources and people to connect with than I think. And also really importantly, if I stay in this toxic environment or I keep this idea to myself, is that helping me and others? For me, I'm trying to improve my stinginess and especially in the past, uh, if my friends were going out, I would think, Ugh, I might pass, I don't have enough money, even though I clearly did. So after we've determined whether this scarcity mindset is valid, the next step is exposure therapy and creating references of abundance. So if you realize that this mindset is not helping you or others and isn't making you happy, the next step is to create or do actions that prove that you are an abundant person. We are our actions, so just thinking I'm abundant is probably not going to help. Joe, you're in debt. You gotta do something about it. <laughs> I'm abundant. Joe, stop laughing. You're in debt. What the? <laughs> I am abundant. What the heck? I'm abundant. <laughs> I'm so abundant. Where is that coming from? So exposure therapy, which is doing exactly what you fear because of scarcity. So that means spending a little bit of money and asking yourself, do I actually not have enough? How do I feel? Am I happier because of it? It's about sharing your ideas which you want to hoard to yourself and thinking, how did it feel? Am I glad I was generous? Was it as bad as I thought? It's about trying less to please people like this. Yeah, to be honest, I'm not really a fan of cricket. And then seeing how it feels to do actions of abundance rather than scarcity. 
I honestly have a list of references um, about things that I did despite thinking I didn't have enough, uh, I think, time. Let me just see. Um, where I just wrote, I went to the gym anyway, even when I thought I didn't have time. But then later on, I still had time to do filming and to do all the other things I needed to do that day. So this is about gathering examples of times where you thought you didn't have enough, but turns out you actually did. And then you can use them as references. So next time you fall into that scarcity mindset, you can look back at these examples and think, okay, if I've gone through this once and I was fine, I can do it again. So the next advice is probably more applicable to things like relationships, resources, or opportunities. And that is to practice gratefulness. I'm so grateful for you. You've always had my back and you don't know how much you mean to me. I'm so grateful for you. I'm so grateful. So when I have the thought, I don't have enough of this, I have to consciously tell myself of what I do have and be grateful of that. So it makes me realize that I actually have more than I think. So being grateful doesn't require you to intentionally sit down and write a huge list of what you're grateful for. I got a tip from Headspace actually, which is to just have little post-its that you can put around in your environment so that when you see, you can just be reminded to be grateful. So hopefully this video helped you realize your mindset of scarcity versus abundance, that you've been able to sort of relate to the examples that I've given, and that you feel more comfortable now overcoming your fear of scarcity. I will see you in the next video. Bye.